everybody, this is Brendan at the Common Motor Collective, that's common-motor.com on the internet. Common Motor. Today, what are we doing? We're going to be taking apart CB350 carburetor. We've got a lot of questions about how to take these apart properly, and there's a couple tricks to get them apart the right way so you don't break stuff. If you haven't had a chance already, take a look at our video that talks about how to identify the different types of 350 carbs and all the different parts you might need get your carbs rebuilt. So we're gonna get this on the bench and we're gonna show you how to take it apart. One quick note on the 350. You know, the carbs are, are kind of mirror images of each other, so we're not gonna take apart two, we're just gonna take apart one. The same information applies to both carbs. There's just two of the same thing. All right, so let's take this apart. All right, so here is our 350 carburetor. This is what we call a late style carburetor, um, easily identified by the large drain plug on it and the internal idle mixture screw, which is this guy right here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start tearing it apart. Uh, this carburetor physically on the outside is pretty clean and, and grease free. So if yours is still pretty gunky, you might want to like uh, put some degreaser on it ahead of time before you start taking the guts apart. So the very first thing I'm going to take off is this cover which has the diaphragm and slide underneath it. And I'll show you here in a minute why I want to do this one first. I also got my bowl here for screws and things like that. So let's just start taking this guy apart. This is the exciting part right here, footage. Screws coming out. All right, I'm keeping my thumb on here because underneath this cover, there is a spring that wants to pop out. Like that. Okay, here's our cover. Put them in there. Here's our spring. Very delicate, so be careful with that. And here's our diaphragm. I'm gonna use the small pick. I'm just gonna, there's a corner right here, this little notch. I'm just gonna get underneath it real gently and get the, kind of get it peeled up there. There it goes. And out comes the slide and the diaphragm, just like that. Uh, it looks like this diaphragm is actually in really good shape. Uh, easy way to check it is to kind of give it a stretch around as you're looking at it under a bright light and you're looking for tears, you're looking for abrasions, you're looking for holes. Any of that happens, you gotta swap the diaphragm out. If you need a replacement diaphragm, it's CMC part number 6034 for the 350s. But this one looks like it's in good shape, really pliable. So. We'll get back, to that, get back to that in a minute. Um, the needle here of the, of the slide comes out. It's going to be kind of hard to see in the center of the carburetor there. We've got some, we got some little bits and springs and stuff that are in there. So I'm going to pry them out and then I'll lay them out for you in front of you so you can see it. All right. So that's what's in the middle of the diaphragm slide there. Uh, main needle we're going to replace that with a rebuild kit and um, this is a retaining clip kit comes with a new one of those and then you have this little cap which actually goes on top of here and holds the holds the needle in place uh, this piece there's no replacement for so be very careful with it it's plastic and it's delicate so be mindful of it all right we're done with that our diaphragm is in good shape put it away okay here is the top of the carburetor uh what these little holes are Right here are air bleeds. Those will have to be cleaned out with a piece of guitar string. Uh, if your carburetor happens to have the kind that are threaded in and not pressed in like these, leave them in place. Don't take them out. Uh, there's no need to take them out. Uh, so I mentioned a minute ago I wanted to take the diaphragm off first for a reason. Well, this is a nice flat footprint. So now I can take my carburetor and set it like that. So it's nice and easy to work on to take the rest of the guts out and I have a surface for it. Next up, I'm gonna try to break this uh, drain plug loose here. And a lot of times they're really stuck. Let's see if I can. Oh, wow, it came out. Cool.
drain plug out. Fantastic. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is take off this float bowl. Again, four screws. They're gonna be a little bit longer than the screws that held the diaphragm cover on. But. There's our float bowl. Of course, we'll get to the guts there in a second. Uh, this is what I call the late style float bowl. Again, it had the big drain plug on it, and it has this kind of house shaped gasket that's in here. Uh, this one looks like it's been in here for quite some time. It's probably rock hard. I'm going to pry that out. The pick. Cool. That was easy. Then we'll get all that dirt and crap you can see in there cleaned out. But. That's, that's pretty typical, and this isn't in bad shape. This actually carburetor is in really good shape. So the rebuild's gonna be easy on it, but hey, don't let the video fool you. We've seen many a carburetor that is so nasty, it takes a long time to take apart. So this is our, our float system. Uh, this piece up top here is called the, the main jet retainer. Um, sometimes it's missing out of a carburetor. What this does is it holds these two jets in place when you put the bowl on it, it actually puts pressure on it, and pushes down and holds them. But since the bowl's off, it's kind of flopping around. Uh, if you're missing this retainer, we do have replacements for them. It is CMC part number 6045. Uh, they're available separately. I want to point out uh, a, a detail on it to you. Is if you look here in the slot, this this slot here is like the same width, and this one has this like wide area in it. Right, and the reason it has the wide area in it is because our overflow tube right here fits in there like that. So uh, this really only goes on one way because the notches for the jet sizes here are going to be different. So you'll see that in a second when I pull it out. And these jets just press in. Come on, there we go. Put that aside for a second so you can see it. This is the smaller jets, what we call the secondary jet, although on different documentation calls it the main jet. Put it aside, and this larger jet, it's what we call the main jet, but other people call the needle jet, but it's the bigger of the two jets. And then there is our retainer, and you can see that the slot in this side is smaller, and that one's bigger based on the jet diameter. So it only really goes in one way. So, we've got a couple more things to take out of this thing before it's completely apart. Here's our float. This is the round style float that shows up in the mid to late style carburetor. Um, if you need a new one, we have them. CMC part number 6068. It's held in place here with this pin. I'm going to try to turn it around so you guys can maybe see a little bit better from that angle. I'm going to just press that pin out from right there. Again, this one came out, it should come out that easy, uh, but oftentimes they're stuck. Here's the float itself. So it's in good shape. Uh, if you've been running the bike and it's had gas in it recently, a quick way to check the float is to put it up next to your ear and shake it. If you hear liquid in either one of these floats, it's bad. You need to change it out. So uh, this one looks like it's in good shape. and probably use it over again. It's very delicate. Put it aside with the diaphragm. All right, we have just a few more pieces here to take out. Uh, this is going to be our, our float needle and seat. I'm just going to turn the carburetor over. And there is the float needle right there. This little, little pointy guy. And he went in, he went in right here. That's where the, uh, the gas comes into the float bowl and that's where the needle turns on and off the gasoline right there. So that's the flow. Uh, again, that's in the rebuild kit. We're end up replacing that. we we'll take off this retainer here that holds the jet or the needle seat in place. Sometimes this screw is a real bugger to take out, but well, it came out easy. That one's there, one's up there. Cool. And that guy, I might have to get some pliers on him. I'm gonna go grab some pliers real quick and we'll pull it out. I've got my pliers, so I'm gonna 
There we go. Wiggle that out. That one came out pretty easy. If you look real closely, you can see there's an O-ring on there. Uh, yeah, and if you're just doing an O-ring kit, you would change out that O-ring, but our new uh, rebuild kit comes with a new seat, so we'll put him aside. More pieces to take out here, the carburetor. This is the one that's often overlooked by folks and is also missing out of the carburetor. This that little um, black thing there, that's actually a plug. It's a rubber plug. I'm just get my fingernails in there. There you go. It's like a little mini cork. Uh, yeah, it's really small. Let's right, see if we can see it there better. If it's missing out of the carburetor, you definitely need it, and the rebuild kit has that a little plug in there, so make sure you take that out. All right, so we're left with a couple of different jets and tubes that are here inside the uh, carburetor body. And before I even attempt to, to pull them out, I'm going to use a little bit of PB Blaster to help loosen things up. Dribble some down that one, dribble some down that one, dribble some down that one. All right, I'll let this sit for a few minutes and we will come back to it. But I will point out something else while we're here. You see this little plug right here? Uh, on some of the versions of the carburetor, it's made out of aluminum. Other ones, it's made out of plastic. It's basically a passage blocking plug. It also, we've found that sometimes it's missing out of a carburetor or it's loose and falls out. If it's missing, unfortunately, you're gonna have to make a little plug to, to cover, th cover this up. Or if it's loose, I suggest taking a little bit of epoxy and epoxying it back into place and keeping that nice and level. Um, again, if that's missing, you're going to have a lot of carburetor problems. So check to see if your carburetor has that as well. So that might be long enough on, on the penetrating oil. So the first thing I'm going to take out of here is going to be where I had that little plug. It's going to be a little tiny jet in here. And I have to use a really small screwdriver to get it out. Like this guy here. Your flathead. I can feel it's a little bit. I don't even think the the jet's turning. I think my screwdriver's turning on the handle. It sure is. All right, we're gonna try a different. We're gonna try a different screwdriver. Let's see if that works a little better. There we go. That's better. A little small screwdriver. Okay. Turn the carburetor over. There we go. That is the pilot jet, or what I like to call the idle jet, because it controls the fuel flow for idle speed right here. All right. So there's two more, uh, two more pieces we've got to take out. They're very difficult. No, they're difficult, but people have a hard time taking them out. Um, we're going to show you how to take them out. There are actually other emulsion tubes that are in this tube and this tube. One of them looks like it has a screwdriver head on it. It does not, it's not actually a screwdriver head. It's pressed in and a lot of people break it to kind of take it out. So we're gonna show you how to take it out right now with some other quick tools. This is just a couple of pieces of a uh, two by four. Take the carburetor over. I'm gonna show you the, the top side there. I'm gonna point. So we look in the inside. This is the, the hole where the slide came out. We see these two little holes down here in the body of the carburetor. We've got one, and we have a second one in the back here. And those are the discharge nozzles, and we have to press these out from the top. We're gonna to be pushing down this way, okay? So what I've done is I've taken a couple pieces of wood here, and I'm gonna be holding the carburetor here as a support. I don't wanna make sure these guys are, are not on the table. Don't touch anything. I don't wanna break any of this stuff off here. So I'm gonna take the carburetor, just put it right there just to hold it nice and stable. Okay. Here's my high performance removal tool here. This is a chopstick. I like to use this because it's soft, and, but it's hard enough to be able to, to push down on these uh, pieces of uh, brass here. I'm gonna put a little bit of PB Blaster on the top side here. The main thing is I don't wanna mar them up. I wanna be able to press them out clean without breaking anything. So uh, sometimes I'll just press that with pressure. Other times I have to tap on it with a hammer, let's see. So I want to show you guys, I'm using the chopstick to press down on the jets here. I can't really see it from my angle. That's yeah, one right there. Put my hat in here real quick. See it, like that guy. We're going to press down on that. And then also the one that's over here, we're going to we'll press that on. If I feel it like that. So I wanted you guys to be able to see it with the camera first before I flip the carburetor up and just do it. I want to give it a little love tap here, see if it goes. That's it right there. 
One just popped out. So I can pop the second one out and then I'll, I'll show you each piece right there. Nope, that one broke the end of my chopstick there. So that one might need a little bit of heat to come out. I'm gonna try. I'll show you the first one here. And that is the uh, that is the main jet emulsifier tube. That's a, basically where the air is mixing with the gas with these little tiny holes in it. You may not be able to see it with the camera, but they need to be all cleaned out very well. And uh, that came out pretty easy. I'm gonna work on the other one. I'll get it popped out here in a second. All right, I got that second. I just got that second jet pressed out. I had to use um, a little plastic punch to do it. But there it is, right there. I'm going to show you this one in detail a little bit more. Uh, this is the one people get confused on. You see this little uh, wing right here? It looks like someone tried to take this out. It used to have a second one here. And so it looks like it's a flathead screwdriver slot and people get on it with a flathead screwdriver and try to twist it and take it out. And this is what happens. It gets broken because it's actually pressed into the carburetor. Yeah, I know. I, I've done it before myself. That's how I learned. So uh, this one is, is trashed. We're going to have to swap it out because again, this, this piece is broken off uh, so, but has to come out otherwise if it's in good shape you can clean it and use it over again but yeah that's that's the secondary emulsifier tube that this is a part that commonly people don't take out of the carburetor but needs to be taken out for cleaning all right so that means all of our little holes here in the bottom of the carburetor are empty and there's only one more part to take out the carburetor here That's going to be this idle mixture screw and, of course, the associated guts that go with it here. So I'm going to just take my flathead and pop that apart. So the late style mixture screw is a little bit different from the early style. Uh, see how the, the head of the screw here has a bunch of threads on it? It also means it's got this really skinny little body like that. It's got this one, the spring came out with it. And there's actually should be a little washer on the end of the here. There's not. I mean, it's still stuck in here. That's a part that most people leave in the carburetor. So, mixture screw spring. Now we have to fish out the little tiny washer, and there's also a little tiny O-ring in there. It's in that, that hole there. You're not going to be able to see me to do it, so I'm just going to fish it out and show you what it looks like. But sometimes, like a dental pick or a small pick, you're going to have to use to, to take that part out because it's, it's almost always stuck in there. All right, so I got my pick and I fished out the, here is the, the washer and here's the O-ring I was talking about. It's really small. Again, if it doesn't come out with the spring, you're going to have to pick at them and take them out of there because they oftentimes are uh, stuck inside the, the, the carburetor body. So make sure you fish them out. So the, the order would be you know, spring, washer, O-ring onto this needle here. So make sure you, you yank all that stuff out. Other than that, Put this stuff aside. Come on. In my bucket here. That's it. This carburetor is disassembled enough for cleaning. Now, uh, when it comes to things like the butterfly and the throttle shaft here, you don't need to take that out. Um, I, I w in fact, I would not recommend it unless you absolutely have to for something. It can be cleaned without coming apart. Uh, same thing with like the choke butterfly and the choke linkage. There really is no need to take that out unless something's wrong like this one actually this one's got a cracked butterfly in the front of it we'll have to swap that out but other than that I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't change these things out and that uh, that's it so the carburetor is uh, is a part and ready for a uh, cleaning and a rebuild of course if you're wondering what what parts you need in the carburetor right here and our, our carburetor rebuild kits are it's part number 6047 make sure you select the type of carburetor you have whether it's an early style a mid style or late style because there are different kits for it uh, if you need one of those big style drain plugs 6059 and of course if you need that jet retainer that holds the jets in um, it's part number 6045 and going back to our diaphragm if you needed to get a diaphragm to replace it with our diaphragm is part number 6034 and if you're doing some main jet tuning uh, get some main jets part number 6070 just a quick part quick reference for getting all the stuff put together that concludes our Honda CB350 carburetor disassembly. And the same thing applies with the CL. Uh, this body and all the parts we took out in the bin are ready for cleaning and inspection and, of course, a rebuild, fresh rebuild kit here. Uh, being able to clean carburetors is a really important part of owning a vintage bike, so uh, learning how to do this really kind of games up your skills and understanding on 
how these things work. This is Brendan for Common Motor Collective. That's common-motor.com on the internet. If you guys need help with anything else, please drop us a line through our website on our contact form. We'll get back with you and do everything we can to help. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.